Hey everyone and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey and today we're going to be setting up MEOS Pixie on your Ambernic devices. So for those of you that haven't watched my previous MEOS setup guides, a lot of that will be the same here, but there are some new cool things that make our lives easier. Like Scrappy, for instance, which scrapes artwork for us. And this guide will be the standalone one going forward for anybody to use. Now, because of how much has changed since the last time I did a guide, I'm going to have to do this entire guide from scratch or the perspective of a brand new user. So if you are currently on AW Banana or newer, MEOS does have a quick and easy guide on their website to share how you can quickly update and keep your data. I would personally suggest that you follow this guide instead and start from scratch, but it's up to you. For those of you that are on older versions of MEOS, or maybe you just want to know the folders so you can manually back up and restore later, your saves and states are located in the MEOS save folder, your ROMs are in your ROMs folder, your BIOS files are in your MEOS BIOS folder, and your artwork is in your MEOS info catalog folder. I wouldn't back anything else up, and honestly, even your artwork might not be necessary, as you'll see later on. That also means I wouldn't back up any config files or themes. They made major changes to the config and themes, and if you use your old ones, it could cause a lot of problems. MEOS is also only currently available on the Ambernic H700 lineup of devices, so that's what today's guide is going to be about. Personally, I'll be using my Ambernic RG Cube XX, but you can use any of the H700s. So you're going to want two SD cards for this. Trust me on this one, MEOS is not a custom firmware that thrives on a single SD card, as they usually do full releases like this where it overwrites everything. But if you have a second SD card, you can keep all of your data, saves, ROMs, and all of it on that. So I would personally suggest a 32 gigabyte or 64 gigabyte card for the operating system and a 128 gigabyte or 256 gigabyte card for your ROMs and settings. Plus you're going to need a USB card reader and all of this is in the description if you need advice. Okay, so let's first start with grabbing the latest MEOS release from their website. Go ahead and download the image. You're going to need to grab the image that matches your device model. We're also going to need Rufus to flash the image to your SD card, which you can grab from the Rufus website. The portable version is fine. Open Rufus, make sure the device listed is your connected SD card to the PC. It would be the OS card if you're doing two. Then go ahead and click select and choose the image that you downloaded from the MEOS website. Then just click start and let it do its thing. When that's done, pop it into the OS slot on your device. It is usually labeled as TF1 and turn on the device. Choose your time zone. And then if you aren't going to use Wi-Fi, go ahead and set the time. Otherwise just click B because we can get the time from Wi-Fi later. While all that's happening, for those that want to use two SD cards, we can format that other card. Otherwise one card users can skip this next step. Go ahead and connect your second SD card to the PC and open Rufus. Make sure the device is your SD card, then choose non-bootable for boot selection, and make sure that the file system says XFAT, then click start. When it's done, you can eject. Wait for the device to finish the setup it was doing, and then make sure that you shut down after that. You can now go ahead and insert the second SD card into the second slot, and then go ahead and turn on the device. Head over to config, then storage, and now you can see that pretty much everything is on SD1, which is our OS card. So we want to move everything to SD2, our ROMs and settings card. So go one by one, push X to migrate, and make sure that when you're done, everything says SD2. That way, the next time there's an MEOS update, it'll be super easy for you to keep everything and not delete it all when updating. Going forward for two SD card users, anything that I talk about will be on your second SD card. So you can safely ignore the first SD card unless I bring it up. Shut down the device after you've done all that and put your SD card into the PC. For single SD card users, you would put that single one into the PC. So the ROMs folder is where you put your ROMs and you can name them whatever you want. 
I just copied my ROMs over from my PC, and you can see how I have them named. But it doesn't really matter, you can name the system folder as anything that you want. Whatever is easiest for you to remember what system it is. I personally do GB for Game Boy, GBC for Game Boy Color, GBA for Game Boy Advance, whatever it is. They all go in here, and then inside of those system folders, you put your ROMs for that system. For BIOS files, they go inside of the MUOS BIOS folder. So you can see that I just copied and pasted all of my BIOS files into this folder. Now if you're confused what ROMs and BIOS files are, I have a video on that subject in the description. And also, what file types are best for those ROMs. But ROMs are games, BIOS files are system files that are required for CD-based systems like PlayStation 1, Dreamcast, Saturn, and so on. So at this point, we have added our ROMs, we've added our BIOS files, and we can now jump into some settings, so pop the SD cards back into your device and turn it on. First, you should know how to launch games, and content is where you go for that. Inside, you're going to see all of those ROM folders that you moved over, and inside of that are your games. So you can launch a game just by pushing A. Now alternatively, you can push select and you can choose search content. Then type in lookup and then choose search global or local to search your entire library of games for whatever you want. Also in this menu, you can see assign core. And if you head in there, you can change the core or emulator that is being used for that specific system or the game that you're in. So we are in Game Boy Advance. So I find Game Boy Advance in the list, and I can see that it's set to MGBA by default. But if you want to change that for a specific game, or the entire Game Boy Advance folder, you can do so on this page. The bottom tells you the buttons that you need to push to do those things. Collections is up next, and let's go ahead and create a collection just called Pokemon. This will be if you want to create groups of games. All you need to do is find the game that you want to add to a collection in the content list, push Y, select the Pokemon collection that you created, and then click A to add. It's really easy. History is your history of games, and we haven't played anything, so there's nothing there. Apps is where all of your apps will be. Dingux Commander is a file manager, for example. Portmaster is here, and so on. But let's go ahead and open RetroArch. Head to Settings, Input, hotkeys, and by default the menu button on the device is one combination of your hotkey. And then menu toggle is X on the device. Quit is start, fast forward toggle is actually R1, which I hate, so I'm going to remap that to R2. I don't need slow motion toggle, so I'm going to push Y to delete that. Load state and save state I want to be L1 and R1, so I'm going to remap those. Lastly, show FPS is Y, and that's fine. Back out, and if you want, head to Achievements and sign in with your Retro Achievements login. Back out and go to Configuration File, save current configuration to save your changes, and then quit. Info is just information about the firmware and storage space, there's an input tester, and that sort of thing. Head over to Config, and then General Settings. You can adjust brightness, volume, color temperature, and the device startup here. Now the device startup is what you want the device to boot into, so maybe you want to jump right into the last game you were playing, that sort of thing. You can also control the brightness with the menu button and the volume buttons together as a hotkey. Advanced settings has a bunch of stuff that I don't usually touch, but I would enable RetroArch Network Wait, which tells the device to wait to connect to the network before booting a game, and that really helps Retro Achievements users. Otherwise, it won't really matter for anybody else. Random theme on boot is fun too, especially if you have a bunch of different themes installed, which we're going to talk about in a bit. Head to Connectivity Next, and let's go ahead and connect to Wi-Fi now if you like. With Wi-Fi, you can set up sync thing and remote file access and all sorts of fun stuff under web services. I have a sync thing guide linked in the description if you need it. Back out and go into customization, and you can see theme picker here. Now for themes, you can find them on the theme.mus.dev website. There is a whole bunch of them there. And just click on the theme that you want to download and it grabs the MUXTHM file. 
All you need to do then is put that into the MUOS theme folder and you'll be able to use it. You can then see it in the themes list and you can activate it there. Back out and into interface options and I like enabling network to see the network icon to know if I'm connected in the top right. Power settings will show you what's currently set for sleep mode and all of that and you can leave it as default. And that is it from a settings perspective. One last thing that I promised is artwork. So MUOS still doesn't have built-in scraping yet because Zongo Bongo is lazy and he won't do it. I I'm kidding. It's just not there yet. However, an awesome user, Gabriel F. Vale, created an app called Scrappy and it lets us do it ourselves. So head to the GitHub in the description and download the Pixie MUX zip that is in the latest release of Scrappy, which as of this video is 2.0.0. Go ahead and move that file into the archive folder. And this is actually on your operating system SD card. So yeah, two SD card users, you need that first SD card for this. Go ahead and boot up the device and then head to archive manager and select the file. After that's done, head to applications and then Scrappy. Now, if you don't have a screen scraper login, I would suggest that you grab one to avoid limiting any scraping that you do because there is a limit. So you just go to screenscraper.fr, create a login, and then for those of you that have the login, go ahead and exit out and shut down the device, put the SD card back into the PC, head over to the MUOS applications scrappy dot scrappy folder and open the skyscraper config file in notepad. You're going to see a line at the bottom that says user colon pass. Replace user with your username from screen scraper and pass with your password from screen scraper, making sure you keep the quotes. Go ahead and save that file, eject the SD card, put it back in your device and head right back into scrappy. You can see a preview of what the box art looks like at the top left. And if you push select, you can choose which folders to scrape or filter and so on. Go ahead and click start scraping to start the process. Now it's gonna take a while. If you're curious what it looks like after, here's my Atari folder with some box art scraped. That is all I have for you today. So enjoy MUS Pixie and enjoy playing some games. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow. Come join me on the Discord to talk all about retro handhelds. Support me on Patreon if you like my stuff. And hope you all have a good one.